You are listening to Book Clips, a podcast where authors and narrators expose you to excerpts from different books. You can find the show and more by searching for The Lesbian Talk Show on iTunes, Podbean, or Stitcher. Hello, this is S.W. Anderson, and you're listening to my reading from Switchback. A brief moment of serenity followed by total reckless abandon. That's how Sierra Cody lived her life. Whether she was throwing her body or her heart off a cliff, she was all in from the start. Consequences be damned. Unfortunately, thus far in her life, her heart hadn't fared so well. Professionally, however, she was on fire, living it up as a dream of becoming a professional women's downhill racer had finally come true. Next stop was World Cup, but that wouldn't come easily. She stared down at the mountain, excited for the ride ahead. Mountain biking filled her soul with things she could never explain. Wonderful, powerful things that made her smile stretch from one end of the horizon to the other. It was a shame some people would never experience such joy. In moments like these, she felt sorry for the masses who never stepped foot outside their safety zone, never pushed for more, never challenged their abilities. They were the living dead, merely breathing air, taking up space and doing nothing worthwhile with the gift of life they had been given. That would never be her. Whether it was music, sport, love, or any other passion, what was the point in taking a breath if you weren't going to go full throttle to the end? Call her crazy, and they have more times than she could count. But this, right here, this was what being alive was all about. Straddling her bike inside the starting gate, Sierra basked in the majestic view that the 7,000-foot altitude allowed. The practice rhythm of her breathing and her trusted friend, a Red Scott gambler downhill mountain bike, were her only company. Their shared mission to conquer the mountain was steadfast and unwavering. Every race, every course, was a new puzzle to be finished as quickly and skillfully as possible. Once the buzzer sounded, there would be no more peace, only a finite number of hair-raising minutes until this ride would end and Sierra would begin to crave her next fix. The seconds ticked down. Soon, the frenzy would begin again, but until then, a brief, pleasurable silence. Sierra's eyelids drifted shut behind her goggles, hiding the open blue skies that were interrupted by jagged peaks, whose landscapes were dotted with giant green cedars. Mother Nature's beauty faded into the background until there was only the course and every detail of her journey ahead visualized to perfection. The steep slope out of the gate led into the high banking of the first turn. Then a wicked rock garden awaited, approximately 30 seconds down. She would have to dial back her speed through there. Too fast would send her flying, and too slow would get her hung up on the rocks. Next, a tight switchback to the left before a drop-off. It would be vital to maintain a good speed through that section to avoid disaster on her landing. Finally, it would be smooth sailing as fast as wheels would allow to the finish. Beep! The countdown had begun, bringing her back to the present. Beep! With one more deep breath of crisp, clean air, she gripped the handlebars tight. Beep! Another breath as she steadied her right foot atop the pedal, every muscle tense in anticipation of their imminent explosion. Beep! Her eyes snapped open, locking on their target, the first turn of the winding single track ahead. Beep! Silence engulfed her mind, no more time for contemplation. Her mind and body became one, ready to react to whatever the track had in store. Boop! Powerful quads exploded into action, sending her rocketing down the mountainside. Dirt, rock, and roots passed by in a blur, pushing the limits of how fast her wheels could spin. Two knobby tires mounted to a frame of aluminum moved as an extension of her being, obeying every command with delicate precision. The bike shuddered with vibrations from the earth below, reverberating through her bones. Foam and plastic were all that protected her body, yet she fearlessly carved through the turns, conquered rocks, and flew off jumps without concern, loving every nail-biting moment. Never one to settle for second. Sierra pressed harder and harder. Eagle-like focus read the terrain ahead. Black and red painted fingernails dug into their grips as her thunderous heartbeat silenced the whistling of fans perched along the trail. Every muscle worked the bike to keep as much speed as possible through each obstacle encountered. A tenth of a second here, a thousandth there. They all added up. Brakes were not an option. Not today. Wisp of jet black hair mingled with fiery red strands blew wildly from under her helmet as the wind whipped against her face. This was what Sierra Cody lived for, this controlled chaos. She thrived on the thrill of the adrenaline and the challenge of claiming the podium. It was a good run. She could feel it. Last turn, up ahead, a little gravel and a high banking. 
Easy peasy. Been there, done that a million times before. She was dialed in. Could victory be within grasp? Hitting the banking full steam, her overly aggressive entry threw her weight forward, allowing the back tire to slide. Fast as lightning, well-trained reflexes kicked in, adjusting the bike seamlessly back on course. The top of a boulder exposed from previous rides, however, refused to be denied. The front wheel caught, bringing the gambler to an abrupt halt. Head first, Sierra punched her ticket to a one-way flight over the handlebars. Shit. Every inch of ground passed in slow motion as she rapidly approached her destination. The three-foot-wide trunk of a century-old western red cedar. On instinct, she threw up her shoulder and rotated her torso, hoping to strike something less vital than her head. Upon impact, a loud thud echoed through her ears, accompanied by a sharp pain that pierced her left shoulder and forced air from her lungs. Sierra's limp body bounced off the trunk and crashed into a heap at the base of the giant tree. Ringing. Gasping. So much gasping as she fought to recover her breath and her wits. Son of a... Every inch of her body spoke to her. Some parts hummed with a numb tingling, while others screamed. Nothing responded to her command to move as she lay in the dirt for several long seconds. Finally, the haze cleared, but the stinging pain lingered. How bad is it? A moment of paralyzing fear struck Sierra as she considered the real possibilities that might lie ahead. Never when the sugarcoat things. It was time to take stock of her body parts. First things first, she looked at the upside. I'm alive. That's a win. Now for the downside. Okay, let's start with my neck. She carefully flexed and then rolled her neck. It was sore, but seemed fine. Arms? Ah, shit. The left one was angry as hell. Finally, legs? Their lack of immediate response set her into a panic, but seconds later, they were good to go. Thank God. That could have been bad. So very bad. As she struggled to sit up, the medics arrived. A hand to her sternum kept her still as they performed a swift, methodical assessment. This was the part no rider ever wanted to deal with, and Sierra Cody was known to be more cantankerous than most. Really, guys, I'm fine. Nothing I haven't done before. Just a little separated shoulder. I think. Again, she attempted to get to her feet, but they were having none of it. A clean-cut, dark-haired medic named Derek pulled out his pen light and checked for equal and reactive pupils, while an older, bald medic, Joe, asked questions. What's your name? Can you tell me where you are? Casting a sideways glance and wearing a deep frown, she gruffly answered, I'm Sierra Cody. This is the Ben Stop of the Genesis Pro Downhill Series, and that, my friend, was an epic fail. The medics laughed and carefully helped Sierra to her feet. Derek smiled. Glad you're all right, but you know we have to take you to the care center for a full checkup. He held his hand up as she opened her mouth. And before you say it, Sierra, we know how you are, but it's the rules. Please don't give us a hard time, okay? With a defeated sigh, she nodded and made her way slowly to the truck with her injured arm tucked into her side. The crowd cheered, and she threw them a wave to let them know she was fine. Taking a seat in the truck, Sierra stared out the window and cursed herself for being so reckless. That should have ended so much better, but I screwed up. Again. Damn, that was a ballsy ride, girl. One hell of an endo, too. You must have caught at least six feet of air to reach that tree, Joe gushed. He was as much awe of the crash as he was of the ride. I hate to be the one to tell you this, but you had Ronnie at that last split, Derek laughed and gave her a pat on the back. The only thing Sarah hated more than losing was being on the receiving end of a sympathy pat. Ronnie DiMartini may have been her roommate and best friend since childhood, but they had one hell of an intense rivalry. Yeah, I guess she takes this round. I'll get her next time, though, she grumbled, sinking into the corner of the back seat. Over and over, the fateful error replayed in her head. Ronnie had warned her about the rock. It had become more and more exposed over the weekend and could have been avoided had she not insisted on holding the tight line she had chosen. The high line would have taken a split second longer, but she would have finished her ride instead of getting a personal escort to the care center. Dumbass, Sierra muttered to herself. Dejected, she leaned forward, perching her right elbow on her knee, and pressed her face into a gloved hand. Why do I always have to be so damn stubborn? You've been listening to S.W. Anderson read from her novel, Switchback. This was an episode of Book Clips. Check out the show notes for more on this book. And it would be great if you would rate the show and subscribe to the Lesbian Talk Show podcast channel for more woman-centered content. If you are an author of lesbian fiction, then send us your reading. You can find out how on the lesbiantalkshow.com slash reading.